Hey, you guys, Wendy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Hello. We are going live on a slightly different schedule today. We're doing our technique Tuesday early because I have got to get my son up to, um, well, an hour drive away a little bit later this afternoon. So we usually are. So, all right, like I'm all over the place, guys, but hi, welcome to Technique Tuesday. Let's start over. Okay, there we go. We're good. So we're doing composition. And as always, um, we talk about different techniques and different ways of showing how to create a design that's compelling. So today we're going to cover the concept of an L. And that looks like, all well, my Sharpies keep moving around. That looks like if this is our frame, like so, we're going to kind of create something that's sort of L-shaped. So there's your L, right? Very, very simple. So what I see right there, that looks to me like a a lighthouse and a shoreline and we can kind of you know mess with it so that's in fact what we're going to paint hey holly is Streamyard playing well with you today yes yes it is and it might be that you're watching directly from facebook instead of from inside a group which which has a strong bearing on how that goes so if you guys are watching from something other than Streamyard, um Oh my God, I can't talk today. I don't know what is going on, but whatever, it's cool. So I'm going to quickly sketch out this concept of the L. So I sometimes make my lighthouses kind of fat and funky. And again, I'm just sort of sketching this with a black marker so that you can kind of see roughly what we're doing here. Maybe add some little houses, whatnot, sort of a rough shoreline and then maybe we'll even kind of give it like a little road or something that kind of comes just to create some interest all right so now you can see we've already got basically an l shaped design so let's go ahead and actually turn this l shaped design for composition into a painting and you could do whatever you want here in the sky i'm thinking about maybe even having kind of like sort of some clouds or sky we'll see what, what kind of time we've got I am on a little bit of a time crunch. That's not the orange I want. I looked at the orange and was like, ooh, I'm good. But since recently we've been doing this kind of like prime or tone your canvas thing and then um, and then doing the next bit, uh, I'm going to go with that. So, oh, Caroline Love says hi. Hi, Caroline. How are you? Thanks for joining today. All right. So I'm just going to get this cadmium orange. It's a very transparent one. I got this from Blick, just toning the canvas. And hopefully you can still see the, uh, the black lines in there a little bit. I tried to use permanent marker more than anything just so that you could see it. And again, I'm not worried about brush lot strokes or anything else. I'm just trying to get some color here. Come on, this paint is... Did it do it to me like this last time when we were doing the umbrella? I can't remember. So I haven't made a tracer of this thing yet, but um, I certainly will if you guys are interested. So you can just text Lighthouse to me um, if you want to have a tracer to follow along with this tutorial a little bit later. Or feel free to freehand it, you know, do what works for you. So Caroline, I am great. I, you know, it's funny. I was texting with a friend and I was like, okay, I'm planning and I'm getting all my e-systems out to let everybody know that we're going live at right at 4.15. And then like 4.05, my boss calls. I'm like, oh no, she's a talker. I love her. She's amazing. And I got to be offline, you know, a couple of minutes before, before I go live. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so that might be why I'm a little bit wound up. I'll come down in just a second. Cause you know, you're like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna make this happen? All right, so I just rinsed my big brush. I think that's all I need. It looks very sketchy and kind of crappy and we're okay with that, right? Because what it's really doing is creating a nice base for us to then layer some color on top of. And if little bits of orange peek through, it's perfect. Like that's all we need. Let me pop the button here. It does happen, isn't that crazy? Let me add so I can see my chat comments. There we go. Okay, cool. Yes, I am figuring this out, you guys. Technology. So the way I always call this Technique Tuesday, not Technology Tuesday, because I am the last person on this planet to be providing technical whatever to make this work. So I'm going to do most of this with a larger brush. It's a 5 eighths inch. 
it's just it's more than half an inch but less than a full inch and we always want to have white because white is like a core mixing color so we want some white i know i'm going to want some red i'm going for a tomato red you could you could do a Tuscan red. It's a very cool red. I'm feeling like a warm red's pretty awesome today. So that's where we're going. Now, if you're watching and, and just popped on, feel free to say hi. Let me know you're there. You guys know I love chatting with you. Get a little bit of yellow goop. This is the Folk Art Daffodil. I tend to buy it in, in massive bulk, and so I just put it in a squeeze bottle. And then I think I'm going to skip the green today. We're going to want some blues for sure. I do where'd it go? And I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue. I usually have a, a bottle of this stuff, but it seems to have fallen off my desk somewhere and I can't find it. So I'm going to go with the tube stuff. So the, I am working with primaries right now, um, sort of by accident, maybe some mermaid tail teal also just for, just for giggles. And we'll probably pull a purple or something out of this. We'll see. Okay. So now that we've got some color on our, our palette, we're ready to rock and roll. So let's mix. Um, let's let's get a, a kind of a base coating on the on the on the, the lighthouse, and we'll make kind of we'll take some blue. I've got a little bit of blue on my palette. I'm going to bring it in here, and then I'm going to add some white. That's okay. So now that I've mixed that light blue, I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to add a whole lot more white. I'm going to tone it a smidge with a little bit of yellow. I kind of smear that off, smear it off some more. because so I want to make it kind of a neutral. Again, we love our neutral tones. So it's almost like a pale, funky greenish color, which is totally okay, right? Totally okay and sort of weird. So then I'm going to just kind of come in and kind of create that, that base coat here on the lighthouse. Kind of peeking over at my reference photo a little bit. I'll take that down and we'll get that we'll get a lot of the details in in a, in a minute there we go just get a good base coverage there and you know so like i was doing some research on photos of lighthouses and if your lighthouse is short and squat guess what you've created a nantucket lighthouse if yours is really tall and skinny you may be created like a cape hatteras lighthouse if you paint one that's kind of somewhere in between, well, it's maybe it's a Rhode Island lighthouse. I don't really know. But um, I guess what I'm going with that is don't freak out if your lighthouse isn't shaped like mine. And if you want to freehand this, totally go for it because there's almost no messing it up, right? You know, unless you make it like an upside down cone where it's narrow at the bottom and wider at the top, then maybe it's not going to work. But otherwise, you're good. So taking some of that blue that I just previously mixed and adding a smidge more yellow. So if this is the light kind of neutral color I had, this is the slightly darker one. I'm going to kind of create a line like right along here. That's going to be kind of my dividing line. In fact, I think I'm going to want to even go darker than that. So I'm going to grab a smidge more of that blue, smidge more yellow. Again, it's still kind of greenish. I might add a touch of red just to to dumb and numb it down. There we go. So it's really kind of looks like a gray. We like that. We kind of want a gray. Technically it's going to be white, but it looks like a gray. Good. Then I can grab a smidge of white just on the tip of my brush and just kind of work it in there and maybe create a secondary stripe kind of right in that section with that little bit of white and then grab a little bit more gray and work here. Can you see how I'm kind of doing that? And I'll bring that kind of along in this section here. So now we have sort of a three-tone lighthouse. It looks round and it more or less looks white, only it's, you know, it's a variation on white. It works. Um, so then you guys, uh, maybe you guys can vote. Should we do like a red stripe, which is, I don't know if it's an Nantucket lighthouse or where that's from, or should we do the Hatteras style um, black, um, black uh, candy stripes, the ones that are the, the barber pole one. That's what I'm trying to say. So you guys let me know which ones you think I should do. And that's the one we're going to do between now. And then when you tell me which kind of lighthouse to do, so should I do the black and white diagonal stripes? Diagonal is the word I'm looking for, or like parallel reds or, you know, parallel red stripes. You tell me and we'll do it. Okay. Let's make some, 
some darker tones along the top here. So I'm going to grab some more blue, a little bit of this mermaid tail teal, a little bit of yellow, and then some red to numb and dumb it down. So you see how we can have some bright colors and then I just kind of add red barbershop pole and then I have black and white. Oh my gosh, you guys. So maybe we'll do the black and white barbershop pole. That way we have some OBX feel and we have, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to now take this kind of darkish mushy green and just kind of pop it along, pop it along here, the shoreline and notice it. I'm just kind of placing it. Like I'm not really, not really, ew, go away bug. Just kind of placing it. And since I've got a mix of colors, like up and down the ferrule, little bits of white in there, as I place it, I kind of even get white mushes. Now the OBX and Nantucket. And honestly, I'm not sure which my reference photo, where it's from. My reference photo has a just straight red stripe across, straight red stripe across it. But I'm really feeling the Hatteras light, Lighthouse, which I think has the, um, the, the black diagonal stripes. You know, it's the one like, yeah, it's Cape Hatteras. Okay. So we've got some just kind of green placed in there. Now, this is really simple fine art, right? We're not going, we're not going like, we're, we're going quick, quick and easy. So I'm going to grab some yellow. And I'm going to mix a little bit more of that in here to create a warmer, a slightly lighter green. Do you see how that got warmer and lighter green? I love the Outer Banks too. It's been a while since I've been down there. In fact, I think the last time I went, Holly was with you for your big 4-0 and duck. One of these days I got to get back there. My kids love a good beach, beach week every year. I tried to talk them into going to the river than doing kayaking stuff and they really just weren't having any of it. So I kind of create, so I have that blue sort of horizon line, it's a blue green. And then I took that slightly lighter yellow green kind of right under it. And I've, it's hard to see, but I've kind of sketched in really quickly a, um, a little, a little road. Oh, Holly says, yeah, I still have that crown thing. And Caroline, oh, do you usually go to duck or, um, or do you kind of change it up when you go? All right, a little bit more of the mermaid tail teal to amp that green a little bit more. So what you see is I'm kind of having the darker, more chill colors in the back, and then I'm bringing some of the slightly brighter colors up in front. So a little bit along the road line, I think I want little bits of that green. And we'll kind of bring bits of that green in here. Now, in fact, I'm gonna kind of just smush a little bit, smush and smudge. Maybe a, whoops, a little bit more yellow in here and smush and smudge. And if little bits of that orange are peeking through, it is all good. So we're starting to kind of get a landscape in place. It's starting to it's starting to come together. Oh no, I actually like painted right over my lighthouse, didn't I? Let's see if I can use my fingernail to scrape some of that up so I don't lose my line there. We'll just make it extra like shadow or something. Just duck. Oh gosh, Hilton Head Island. I, you know, I haven't been there since I was a since I was a kid. It's been a really long time. I'm gonna take that yellow, more of the mermaid tail. And so I'm just kind of mixing the same place. I'm gonna add just a kiss of white, kind of lighten it up further, lighten and brighten. And we're gonna add just a little bit kind of in the foreground here. Yeah, Maybe a little bit here. Whoa, uh -oh. let me turn that off. Sorry, I had an alarm going off. It's playing a rock and tune. So I do have kind of an imaginary road right in this zone. Do I have, am I chopping up you guys? Is it, am I coming through okay? I feel like the, um, the camera for my face is looking really choppy. Well, I guess that's the least important part, right? Like what you really want to see is the painting anyway. So as long as the, the mic is working and you can kind of see the painting, we're good. A little bit more white to that. Again, just kind of adding some texture and the little lighter bits as they kind of come forward into the, into the foreground. And I'm going to add a 
add just a little bit more. I'm gonna go a little bit more bluish here. So I just put that blue right on top of that green. Oops. And some more white. Right, trying to trying to get a cooler, a cooler green now. There we go. And so just looking kind of at my reference photo. So Holly says a tiny bit, but all fine. Yeah, the mic painting perfect. And who needs to see me? Exactly. Well, see, at least you got it figured out. Whoop. Okay. So that came out a lot lighter than I sort of thought it was, but it's still fine because I can get kind of some nice kind of just color in the distance. Kind of the tops of, of the bushes, whatever. Can do a couple little bits in here, just kind of little dashes. I'm just almost kind of kissing little tiny bits with that. All right. And just looking at it. So I'm okay with a little bit of that kind of reddish, ruddy tone showing as well, because it kind of almost looks like red dirt. Um, we may want to tone it a little. And I've got a ton of paint on this brush. So I'm now at a point where I'd like to offload it. And my offload book is, I don't know where. Is that my, no, that's my good atlas. All right. Okay, here we go. So I'm all about having like a place to offload my paint. So I often just get like old textbooks and whatever, and then just kind of paint it out that way. And the reason I do that is it just, it, it preserves my, my paint water. And it also kind of primes cool potential um, places for me to uh, do more, do more artwork. All right. So I'm going to grab some yellow, a little bit of that red, kind of create an orange. But notice, because I didn't rinse my brush, I'm picking up little bits of that green. So it's helping me create a kind of a, a little bit more neutral, a little bit more neutral um, orange than what I have here. Still trying to pop it a smidge more with a little bit more red and white. So I'm just going very, very slowly as I mix this. Okay. I'm going to start to kind of put little bits of that in here. Just kisses. I want some of that orange to show through. So I'm kind of almost adding like dashes and lines across that. And then I can go a smidge lighter to create kind of some like, you know, variation in, in the, in the dirt there, little bits of white, just kind of dragging it in almost like a straw color, just little bits in here. Again, that just makes that little kind of road that is kind of meandering off. Kind of makes sense. But if I go much further than that, it's 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 going to start to look un unrealistic. Hey there, Melanie. Thanks for joining. Good to see you. Been loving watching all your cool wire bending stuff. I I I, I can't bend a wire to save myself. So I really admire what you're doing. All right. So coming in, grabbing a little bit more of this orange, and I'm going to add just a I want an orange. I really do love this orange background color we've got going. So again, mixing, mixing. Just not quite finding the right, right blend there. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna just bring a little bit back in, right in here, and a couple of little kisses of the red. And again, that just allows it to have some contrast, and it's always fun when you've got these bright colors going on. So again, offloading my brush. I just needed that little tiny mix. And so let me bring this up to the camera so you can really see kind of what's going on here. Um, I've got, so I have to kind of look over here at my reference. Ah, wait, I can't hold it still. So I've got the base orange and then I've kind of got those straw colors plus the little dots of red in there. And then I've just added back in little bits of red here and you can see where I've got the dark blue and that paler. It's actually all green, but it's got blue tinges, the blue green. Cool. Cool. So now I'm going to rinse my brush because Actually, no, I'm not. We're going to make a sky. We're going to make a sky color and we're going to allow some of that color to just be in there. So grabbing a whole hunk of white and notice I've got bits of orange in it. I'm going to take some of my ultramarine. Of course, that's a pretty high end ultramarine. Oh, perfect. And I've got a super, let's purple it up a little, a little bit of red. So just looking at what I've got. Yeah. Okay. We're going to purple it. And I'm going to make purple it by just adding blue and blue and red. Okay, so we'll take some of that across the sky up here. 
and you know just want to get a little bit of a little bit of sky color kind of placed in that's pretty pretty dark and that's fine because i'm going to come in here with the white just kind of add add to it a little bit of white maybe a smidge of blue a little bit more white so see i'm kind of keeping it loose and we're really allowing that sky to happen in in a range of tones now it's looking a little rough right now but we'll we'll get it we'll get it we'll get it pulled together but i can kind of come right along this edge with this guy and this is where it's fun if you create the edge you let a little bit of that orange show and it's almost like adding an outline without having to add an outline so my next goal so Melanie says, I missed the beginning. Um, are you doing a coastal scene with a lighthouse? I am. So one of the things that we're, what, that I'm trying to do, so each week I do a Technique Tuesday. Usually it's closer to like 7 p.m., but I've got kid stuff going on today, so I had to move it to way, way earlier. Um, and so we, we each week we talk about a different element of composition. And right now we're working on all the different like archetypes um, and one of the archetypes of landscape is an L shape. And so I first did a quick sketch of what an L shape looks like. And now I'm creating, you know, a scene that, that sort of shows what that might actually look like versus just the concept. Or I'm demonstrating. There you go. Okay. So see, I've added a bunch of blue kind of down there right at the, um, kind of right at the horizon line. Um, now, typically when you look at a photo of a clear sky, it tends to be brighter or deeper blue at the top. So I may come in and tweak that as well. But for some, but this orange was really starting to kind of like make me a little bit crazy. So I'm trying to, to tone it back a smidge. Just so that you can kind of feel that sense. But still, you know, in a few spots where it pokes through, it's kind of fun, right? You get these cool... Um, you do get cool effects. So now all of a sudden, because we've got those little bits of orange peeking through and even some of it, you know, showing underneath this, the skies really come kind of alive. So from here, I'm gonna grab some white and just sort of, again, smush it right into that. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go, now I'm on camera. Smush it into this. And I'm just keep working in our sky area. And I'm thinking, I've got a lot of paint on my brush, but I'm just going to kind of come in and create maybe some long, low, simple, almost wispy clouds. Like I don't want them to be too cumulus. So it, yeah. And it tends to be that, you know, clouds kind of, they, they almost work in layers. There we go trick of getting something that goes directly behind this without it looking weird. Make, extend it out and make a little bit of a lump there. You see how it, like you can be pretty subtle with that. Oh, Caroline said, wow. Thank you. So again, just still kind of taking that white, although it's not white, right? That's, that's downright gray. That's white. But this is our, our cloud color. And you're going to look at that and you're going to tell me it's white. But you're also going to look at that and tell me it's white. And you're going to look at that and you're going to tell me it's blue, even though those are almost the same color. But you all know, that's what art is really about. It's, there's, a, there's a whole lot of magic that goes on. The brain perceives things in such a strange way. Okay. So now somehow I'm going to have to figure out how to pull off the top of this and get the stripes without messing it up. I'm feeling a little nervous, but I think we got this right. And um, let's see, do we want to get a little darker at the top or maybe leave that red? We'll see in a second. I'm going to offload my brush. Now notice I'm working with a big brush that forces me to stay pretty loose, right? If this was a, if this was a tiny brush, I personally would just get completely stuck and lost to the details. That's just... That's just me. I always get like, I go down that rabbit hole and get lost in the details. So working with larger brushes forces me to really sort of stretch out, spread out, and and and, and push my own kind of limits. 
right, so just getting a good rinse on my brush, getting all the, the paint off. So we're not going to use black. We're going to make black stripes, but we're not going to use black. How do we do that? Well, oddly enough, I know I, I trot this guy out every so often, but this vase right here often looks black. It's navy blue with some smushy green on top. So we're going to do navy blue stripes that with smushy green on top, maybe. <laughs> yes, Melly, it is so easy to go down the rabbit hole. I'm like, yeah. All right, I'm going to add some red to that to darken it up. And then a little bit of yellow to that to kind of neutral it up. So I took my ultramarine, added some red to purple it, added some yellow to neutralize it, a little bit more blue to deepen it. And now I've got a pretty good dark color, which is very dark compared to that and all this stuff. So I'm going to say that that will pass for black. We hope. And then I'm just going to say, all right, we got a stripe that kind of goes like so. And again, if you guys want a tracer for this, just text me. Um, this number right here, 571-416-7102. Um, just text me Lighthouse and I will create a tracer. It's going to be a, little, a couple hours from now, though, because I got to i to run up to DC with my kid or his climbing team. Just kind of, you know, that needs to be what much thicker, doesn't it? They don't have skinny, skinny ones. We gotta make that thicker. But it shouldn't be too hard for me to turn this into a tracer. I can do it when I get home. So if you want it, you just gotta tell me you want it. And alternately, if you're like, hey, I would love for you to text me when you go live or just remind me. Um, you can also just text me live or you can you can text me whatever you want. You can just say hi and I will happily add you to my live notification thing. I know some of you got that text and hopefully it was helpful. Okay, so we just placed a couple of stripes in. Now that looks really flat if you ask me. Like really flat and that's because I just used a single color and so I've almost negated like the, the highlight that I just created there. So now I can literally take this color and grab some white and mix, oops, I should do that. I'm used to having like all this space on camera but I was like, you know, maybe it would be helpful if you saw my face every once in a while. Cause like literally I was watching this woman today and she shows up a hot mess and starts doing her makeup and she's giving like the most amazing talk and I was like, Oh, well, okay. I, if, if she can show up like that, then I can show up. That's cool. All right, we got this. So now I'm going to take that kind of lighter, lightened blue. It's still pretty dark. And kind of do, I would say, two-thirds of that stripe from this side to here. So if I have my darkest gray along this zone right here, then I've left the darkest navy there. And I've brought this lighter gray all the way out to kind of cover to here, sort of with that, that the, the middle stripe and the and the, the right stripe. Oh, my mouth, I'm trying to talk, but I'm like, so now grabbing more white, I'm gonna sort of pull out from that, that dark blue that we just did. So if the dark navy that we did, the first, the quote unquote black was here, and this was our middle black, here's our, here's our highlight black. I'm worried about that one. Let me see. It. Let me go a little darker first. I'm 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 feeling nervous. So I'm gonna mix just a smidge darker. And I'm gonna just kind of bring that along here. Yup. Still looks like black. How weird is that? I'm so happy when so you remember like those I'll like there's like this whole debate on the internet about this one dress, and everyone's like, what color is this dress? Because it was a photo. And everyone argued and argued and argued. Like, we're basically doing that dress effect right here. Because that light blue, that looks like black, right? It's crazy. I love this. That's why I love color. All right, I'm going to offload brush. As I've noticed, I, there's one teeny tiny itty bitty tweak I need to make on my dark color here. Oops. Okay. Good. So that's literally, let me bring this all the way up. Here's like the major cheat. I literally just made stripes. Look at that. I just made stripes. One, two, three. Now, if I wanted to be like, hey there, Melanie. So now I have two Melanies. 
Okay. So I created stripes and that's kind of a cool cheat. I may want, I think I want to just blend them a little bit. So I'm just going to come through and just softly wiggle jiggle my brush across that, that line. It's almost a dry brush. Um, so it's going to more gently blend it. And then I'm going to come back into my slightly lighter color here, but not too much offload it on my palette and then come through and kind of wiggle, jiggle, wiggle, jiggle, wiggle, jiggle, just to soften that. But sometimes, you know, it's okay to just start with stripes, right? Because those stripes are going to be like, yep, I got it right. I have my location kind of where I want it to be. I think I also want to lighten the White House, just the White House. Light, what? Whiten the lighthouse, not lighten the White House. You got me. Well, we're going we're gonna to tweak that building right there and make it a little lighter or pop the highlights a smidge. And then eventually... I'm in denial. I'll get to this part, which is, it's like the one part of the lighthouse I can never get right. Every time I draw a lighthouse, I always get a little stuck right there. <laughs> it's okay though. Maybe I will grab, okay, a little bit of white and plop it in right, more white, right? Like right in here. Just grabbing the last like dregs of, of gray. And I'll just kind of come in and just get a little bit in there. And again, I'm just using kind of the corner of my brush. Maybe a little bit more light. I think we can get away with that. Cool. Now, in my reference photo, there's actually kind of like a little house in this zone here, and we could kind of add a couple of a couple of white blobs for houses. So that looks pretty cool from zoomed out. Let me zoom in so you can see that it is literally like white blob blush, white blob brush strokes. You could totally get away with that, right? Because we're just painting loose. We're kind of relaxing. We're having fun. Now I can come back in, grab some of that dark blue that we just used, the our, this quote unquote black, and then maybe add just some, some shadow in there. You know, create something almost roof like. I don't know. Like it, it's absolutely nonsensical. I blobbed it, but when you zoom out, it kind of looks like there's a house or something going on there. Who knew, right? Offload, rinse. And now let's let's make some more quote unquote black. Okay, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? Okay, I got it, I got it, we got this. So blue, again, so I'm just gonna bring the blue over here in that orange that we previously mixed because I think I'm done with the orange. So now I've just created a nice dark. In fact, that's pretty much perfect right there. Look how dark that is. Ultramarine blue is so beautifully flexible. Maybe a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more blue. Because I need I need enough of this stuff. Okay, let's do this. So just for fun, we'll kind of add just for like a little something here, kind of across, almost like the lip. I come straight up here. Oof, I don't get clean edges on this brush anymore. I've got some bristles. So if you have a bristle sticking out, pull it out. Otherwise it's gonna give you really unclean lines and it's gonna drive you bonkers. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go dark here. There's supposed to be like this whole lighted area. We'll figure out how to make that work. Of course it's a daytime picture so we can kind of get away with to get away with it not being all lit up and yellow okay so now we've kind of got some form here i can take some white kind of come over here again with my so that's a new neutral -y light i love that one that one works really well and i can kind of create like a highlight kind of here along the, the roof a little highlight right in here along their room. Can you see that? I think so. Oops. Let's see if I can do more there. So I can even kind of create like a little kind of rim there and there, a little highlight. That works. And then we can create some windowy stuff. So I'm gonna stick in that same color and just grab some more white. And just kind of mix way down till I get kind of a, <clears throat> excuse me. There goes a voice, a palish gray. 
Look at how gray that is. Can you believe that's red, yellow, blue? So I know I'm like always like, oh, I'm a CMYK person. I really just kind of like to use, you know, magenta and cyan and yellow, but it's working okay like this too. So now I literally just created three slightly irregular rectangles kind of right in there that now gives that impression of windows. It's, it's very close in tone to the sky, but slightly different. And again, still going, just working with the big brush. You could add a little, uh, a little highlight kind of along the edge of some of those windows. It's a little bit of white, but then gives it kind of a, a reflection. Maybe a little bit more white in a few spots on this. Oh, he needs a little dark, a little dark ball on the top or something, doesn't he? So there we go. We'll just do that. Never mind that it's lighter than everything, but that's okay. A little white, a little edge. Pretty much just did a lighthouse. Whoops. <laughs> I mean, it's not a whoops, but it's not bad, right? So my one my one qualm with this is I feel like the lighthouse and the sky don't <clears throat> don't quite work together. So I made, in fact, I think I'd like to tweak the sky a little and go lighter and brighter. So I'm going to come in here, get some red, pinky, a little bit of blue, purpley, a little pinky. So we've got this gorgeous purple and I'm going to big hunk of white. I'm going to just kind of come in and lighten that sky. A little smidge more blue over here. So I'm creating a little blue zone here where I can take the very smallest amount and kind of work it in. If you take like straight blue and go into this, it's going to, it's going to become that. And so I do that over here and then take just a little tiny bit of that and move it in. Okay. So now I can get kind of some blue in this guy up above and I'm sorry, I got all excited about those clouds and we put them in and now I'm kind of coming over and taking them out. But the color tones were just not quite working. In fact, I would like to add more white to this. So we'll continue to lighten it up as we come down. And it's okay, you know, even if we've got some of that base color underneath, the layers, the layers aren't bad. And it kind of starts to blend. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Get a little bit of that. So I grabbed a touch of the blue from the side of the palette just so I can come, kind of come back up high in here. There, see, now the sky is kind of coming to life. And I've maintained some of the orange background around the lighthouse. So he still kind of pops. There. So let's face it, in reality, like when you're... Um, looking out at the sky or, you know, at the beach or OBX. Half the time you're looking out, like the sky is just the very lightest blue, but your brain still knows it's blue. There we go. Yeah. This shift in color is, it works a little bit better for my sensibilities. Now, if you don't agree with my sensibilities, I'm okay with that. Like you're allowed to totally tweak the heck out of this and make it your own if you wanted to go more stormy, more whatever, but definitely personally felt like it just needed a little bit more of a purple tone. I am trying to escape purple this month because I feel like all of January and half of February, everything went purple on me by accident. And I don't even want to admit that I'm not even that big a fan of purple, but I was absolutely kind of obsessing with it. So now just a couple more. So I had a tiny, the tiniest pinch of red into that little blue smudge I had over here. I'm going to bring a couple of those darker tones. Let's see. Tiniest pinch. Tiniest pinch. Like just one corner. Mix a darker purple over here. And then blend some of that white in. Just to kind of add a little bit more depth up high. Okay. How are we doing on time? 40 minutes. Not bad. I'm going to wrap it up real soon. Okay, so now if you want to add some clouds, we'll grab a hunk of white, plop it in right here, maybe grab some of our, our gray to neutralize a little, just so we have a slightly different tone. And then we can, oops, that's too much. And then we can kind of come back in and 
kind of re-add some of our, our cloudy bits. It'll be slightly different than the last time, but keeping it wispy, trying to avoid the cumulonimbus today. Kind of more just wispy, wispy, clear bluebird day. I'm gonna make this one big smushy cloud. It was getting a little bit too, a little bit too regular, a little bit too, like we're just one big happy, funny cloud. A little bit of highlight along the top. So I just grabbed some pure white and kind of placed it right on top of, right just above those other lines I'd had in there that kind of just gives little highlights. Now we need something kind of happening over here, kind of just drifting off, off screen, off cam, off painting. See if we can have something that continues. It's always sort of the hardest part. All right, I think I'm going to call this guy done. Um, if there's, now I'm not. The green needs just one more little pop. Let's add one more little pop. And then I really do gotta be like, go. Get my kid to rock climb in. I don't know if there's a yoga class for me, but oh my gosh, if there, I love taking the yoga class there. All right, so mermaid tail teal and yellow. Make it real bright here, touch a white to pop it lighter. So that's really almost just fluorescent and brilliant compared to what we've got. So then, I don't know if you saw that, but I literally took my brush and kind of like scrubbed it. And when I scrub it, it creates like, um, like the, the bristles are all like spread out and kind of like spaz, but that's going to give me little dotty bits that I can just kind of pop kind of right in here. And I think I want to add a little bit more yellow to it. One more yellow. So I have to be careful when I'm grabbing some of this yellow, not to grab the parts that had the red and a little more white. There we go, just little tiny kisses of, of the bright parts. And that just kind of helps create kind of a foreground. I want some of that orange to continue to show through. Maybe a couple of little kisses over here along the, along the road, a little bit here. Again, if you have any of your like, of your outline or your sketch still showing, okay to kind of just give it a little, little cover here and there. There we go. Just some straight yellow kind of popping in there. So now the foreground, it's really like lit up here. And then as it goes back, it gets darker. And Holly says, when you said light and immediately thought a touch of yellow, is there a reason color strategy? Well, I did actually lighten it with yellow. Um, so it, it, it works great. Um, so not only did I pop it with yellow and that kind of changes the, the, the color, because instead of it being a green green, it now becomes more of a yellow green. But I also add white for two reasons. One, it makes it more opaque, so it really shows up. Um, but it also makes it lighter. And so that allows us to kind of play with the values. And so we talk about value a lot. And sometimes I don't talk about it directly. Sometimes I just kind of integrate it into the... Oh, ooh, okay. So Holly you meant the sky. Okay. So Holly asked, what about adding yellow? So if I add yellow to the sky to lighten it, it's going to either go green or mushy or whatever. So for this one, you know, I've got kind of a, a more neutral gray here. I wanted to purple the sky so that it felt a little bit more. Um... <laughs> oh, Holly says I forgot to send the comment. Okay. So I'm answering your question like way late. Okay. Well, cool. All right, now I'm officially done. So I hope you had fun with this. Oh, but here comes the best part. It's always my favorite, the reveal. It is, we, here, we're gonna untape the project. And if you're using tape, this is just painter's tape from Lowe's, like, you know, for house painting for my walls. I reuse it. This was fresh just cause I couldn't, my other stuff was getting a little bit, a little bit scary. Look at that, you peel it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is the best part. 
And even, even when I'm glopping on that paint, I still get fairly crisp lines. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I like it. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you've had fun. I hope you learned something. And again, now we have that cool L-shaped design for composition. And we'll see you guys on Thursday for our lunch and paint. And again, if you want to get the tracer for this, just text me the word lighthouse at 571-416-7102. And I'll also make sure to let you know anytime I'm going live. That way you can pop on and join me. I know some of you get all frustrated because you don't get notified. So fine, I'm taking it into my own hands. I'm just going to text you. Oh, Caroline says, thank you. Or says, beautiful. Thank you, my dear. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye.